is our third and last session with um, Hummingbird Travel, your Indian Ocean Specialist. If you missed the first webinar on Seychelles and the second one on Mauritius, they are available on our YouTube channel. Um, so today, as I mentioned previously, um, we left, we saved maybe the best for last. Um, so today is all about the Maldives. Thomas has been roughly 20 times to the Maldives um, and he can tell you all about his experience. Thomas, thank you for joining us again. Thanks very much for having me. And uh, yeah, hi everyone, good to be back and uh, delighted to be talking about the Maldives um, this time, which is, um, yeah, saving the best for last. It's definitely probably, it's definitely our most luxurious destination. Um, and it's it's where we kind of started. So uh, I, I've been at the company since 2008 and I, yeah, I've been quite a few times over, over my career at Hummingbird and um, got to know the destination very well. And, and yeah, we, start, we started actually selling them all these all the way back in the 80s. And uh, we kind of um, expanded out to the Indian Ocean. But uh, the Maldives is still, still remains our most popular destination. Uh, it has the most amount of products, the most amount of luxury properties, and it, it remains the, I'd, I'd, I'd say in the world right now, it, it remains the sort of luxury destination of choice for, for the discerning traveler. It's, it's the place where people, if, whether they're on honeymoon or they're a family, uh, that's where they choose to, choose to spend their holidays. And, and that was partially aided, I think, strangely, by COVID because of the unique uh, geography of the Maldives and the fact that you have got lots of little islands spread out over a large distance, it, it meant it could handle uh, the pandemic quite well, uh, certainly in comparison to other countries, because, um, you know, you have private resort islands with guests and staff and that's it. So um, you could contain uh, an outbreak of, of COVID much better in the Maldives than you could on a, in a densely populated country. So it meant that it was open in 2020 as of the summer. Uh, it was open for business and we had guests going there as of like June 2020. And, uh, and it's been, uh, its popularity has soared as a result. And the amount of guests coming from uh, the Americas, from Europe, uh, from the UK as well, of course, uh, has increased. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really popular luxury destination. So, yes, we have just covered that. Um, there are no entry requirements, which is quite nice. So you you can just you don't have to take a PCR test. You don't need to take any. You don't have to take a vaccine, and you can come to the Maldives um, with minimum fuss. And uh, it, it's strange because it's become this sort of luxury destination with a lot of high-end resorts. I mean, you have all the big brands in the Maldives um, and a lot of hotel chains, their flagship hotel is based in the Maldives, where it's one and only Four Seasons, St. Regis, um, you've got Jawali, Vela, Cheval Blanc, uh, Gilly, St. Neva, Six Senses, Nautilus. Um, the list goes on. There's so many, a Miller, there's so many high-end luxury properties like the best of the best that you'll find anywhere and and that's one thing that has changed when when i first started at hummingbird it was well there, there wasn't a, a honeymoon element there was a luxury element it was a it was a simpler destination i think in yeah 20 2008 it was more still sort of more geared towards um more affordable and inclusive stays um more older older style accommodation thatched roofs natural woods and it was very popular with divers, particularly from Germany and France and Italy. Uh, it was sort of a, it's a great dive de destination, great for marine life and snorkeling. But that was it was it was simpler. It was a more sort of stripped back product in those days. And and since then, really, it's sort of it's become more geared towards the top high end market. You still do have affordable four stars and five stars and all inclusives. And and there, there's a, now there's like one hundred and forty. Uh, 150 resorts in the Maldives. So there's, there's a huge choice of properties to choose between. You compare that to Seychelles, I was talking about the other day, and uh, you know, that's only got 
they've got a quarter of that um, of the resorts available. So the Maldives has so many properties to choose between. Um, but year on year, there a new sort of luxury five star plus property has opened up. So more recently, you've had the Waldorf Astoria and the Ritz Carlton uh, open in, in the Mali Atoll, and they're very high end as well. And, um, there are yeah more luxury properties on, on the way as well. Joali uh, has opened a, a sister property called Joali Being, which is a wellness luxury resort. It's opened fairly recently. Um, so yeah, it's it's a sort of it's become this luxury destination, but also not just for honeymooners. It's become a sort of destination popular with families as well, which is uh, sometimes overlooked. I think I, I think most people when they think of Maldives is they're thinking about honeymoons, but uh, since the pandemic, we've seen families go like multi generational grandparents, parents, ch children taking two free bedroom stays and staying in the Maldives. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely developed and changed. Um, but if you want luxury and you want privacy and uh, you want the best of the best in terms of service, food, um, then Maldives is a tough, tough one to beat, really. And beach, of course, great beach. So, this is a map of the Maldives. This is the North and South Mali Atoll. Uh, I'll get my points right. Um, yeah, this is the North and South Mali. And this is where all guests will arrive into if they're coming on an international flight, they fly into Mali Airport. And the Maldives is basically, it's, it's in the Indian Ocean, it's south of India and Sri Lanka, southwest, um, just here. And it is one of the world's most disparate countries. It's spread over uh, 90,000 square kilometers. Uh, north to south is about 960 kilometers. So although the islands are very small, there's a great deal of distance between the different islands. Um, so things like the logistics, you do have to bear in mind. Basically, it's an underwater mountain range. The islands are the tops of the mountain peaks, and these form these atolls that you see here. And on top of the atolls, uh, top, of the, top of the mountains, you have sandbanks that some hotels have created, been created on. Um, so yeah, 1,190 coral islands um, made up of yeah, about 150 resorts. You've got about 150 local islands, uh, and then lots of uninhabited islands, farm islands, sandbanks, um, you name it. That, that, there's there. So there's actually quite a lot to explore in the Maldives. Uh, a lot of uninhabited islands. And you can one of the great pleasures is is doing a bit of island hopping, going to a picnic island, and uh, having having it all to yourself, and going swimming around it, snorkeling, having a barbecue on it, um, having that sort of Robinson Crusoe experience is really fun, um, which I would definitely recommend. And it, yeah, it, it does. It is a remote destination, um, and that's that's also what's quite special. But yeah, in the North and South Mali, at all, North Mali, South Mali, there's a lot of properties in this region because they're relatively close to the airport. So easy to get to, you can get a speedboat from the airport to the property that you're staying at. So that's, that's why it's quite convenient, quite popular for guests uh, to stay in that area. Um, and you've got a lot of hotels. So yeah, one and any Ritu Ra, uh, Four Seasons Kudahura, the Ritz Carlton, the Waldorf Astoria, Gili Lankan, Fushi, Anantara, um, Naladu, a lo lot of uh, luxury pr pr products are based there. Um, so for your high-end guests, and there will be some guests that will refuse to take a seaplane on domestic flights. So some guests will only take a speedboat because they just want to get to the re resort as quickly as possible. And the advantage to speedboat is it is the most convenient, it's the quickest. Uh, you, it, you can transfer day or night, it doesn't matter what time you arrive into the airport. Uh, you can get a speedboat to the island that you're staying at. So uh, Mali Atoll is very popular for that reason, for the convenience. And it is a very nice atoll as well. Um, you've got uh, shipwrecks, so it's great for a lot, lot of shipwrecks around the, uh, around the atoll, so it's great for, for diving shipwrecks. And um, not now, though, of course, it's very safe. They're all very well marked out, so you won't have any problems getting to your hotel. Um, but you also, you know, you've got Mali, the capital city there. You've got la the largest local islands uh, where the majority of the Maldivian population live on Mali and work, of course. And the airport island, you've got Hula Mali Island and lots of, lots of other local islands to visit if you wish as well. So there's quite a lot going on in the Mali Atoll. 
But if you go further afield, say, well, anywhere actually outside of the North and South Mali Atoll, it's too far for a speedboat to go. So you would take a seaplane or a domestic flight. Um, now, if you go to the north, there's some popular atolls with very nice hotels. This is the Bar Atoll, like a sheep bar, B double A, and Ra Atoll, R double A, Bar and Ra. To get to these atolls, you have to take a seaplane or a domestic flight. And you would fly again from Mali Atoll, take about 35 minutes, 40 minutes. And you go to your hotel. So in the Bar Atoll, for instance, you have the, another four season property called the Landa Garabaru, which is very nice. Anantariki Harbour, big fan. Um, Vakaru, really, really nice as well. Amilla, Finalu. Uh, so some awesome properties up in, up in the Bar Atoll. Uh, and then above it in, in Ra, you've got the Joali and Joali Being, and a lot of some really nice five star all inclusives up there as well. Um, oh, yeah, you've got Saniba Fushi in Bar as well. So there's a lot of great products in Bar and Ra. And the advantage to getting a bit further away, taking the seaplane or, or the domestic flight, is it is more remote. It's less built up. There's less uh, planes nearby, less islands in, in view, um, less boats going past. It's just, I mean, Maldives is, is, is wherever you are in Maldives is always going to be fairly quiet, but there is a difference between staying in Bar and Ra to staying in North and South Mali Atoll or basically any, any atoll outside of, of the Mali Atoll, really, that you do notice the difference. So that's the advantage. Um, North and South Mali, convenient, but to be even more remote, to have, um, you know, no zero light pollution, you're not going to see any other islands on the horizon, to have that kind of real exclusive experience, uh, you do need to go a little bit further away um, to, ha to have that. And then, you know, you've got islands way down in the south, way up in the north, and actually they're too far for a seaplane to go, so that you take a domestic flight, which is a larger aircraft, and it lands on a local island airport, and then you take a speedboat. Uh, to whichever island you're staying at. So there's a really popular one. Uh, one of my personal favorites is Six Senses Lamu, uh, which is down in the Lamu Atoll. And from there, you fly to a local airport and then you take a, a speedboat transfer to, to Six Senses Lamu. And there's four domestic flights a day and it's good service. And then you, you take a speedboat, it's smooth transfer. Well, and it's a really nice experience because it's so remote and you, you get down there and then you take your speedboat and you go to the, really to the middle of nowhere. Um, so you've got amazing marine life as well in the south. Just a few other pointers while we're looking at the map. Um, back to the bar atoll again, seaplane or domestic flight. It's got an area called the Hanafaru Bay, it's just about there, which is where you get large numbers of manta rays gathering and feeding on plankton. It's a UNESCO um, world biosphere. It's the only uh, biosphere in the Maldives, protected biosphere in the Maldives. And you can get a permit to go snorkeling uh, from an island. And obviously, if you're staying in the bar atoll, that's the easiest place to do it from. So if you're staying at somewhere like Anantariki Harbour or Saniba Fushi or Four Seasons Lander or, or a more affordable property like uh, Kiha uh, or Coco Palm Dunakuli, you could get a permit and go snorkeling with sometimes up to 30 or 40 manta rays. So it's one of the nicest things you can do in the Maldives. So it's definitely a, a trip I would recommend doing. Likewise, if you go down to the Ari Atoll, A-R-I, this is the Ari Atoll, um, you've got the North and the South Ari Atoll. And this is a really good place to see whale sharks, particularly the South. You can see whale sharks year round. Whale sharks, usually you've got a better chance of seeing them May to October, but in Ari Atoll, the South Ari Atoll, you can see them year round. And uh, also has really fabulous resorts. You've got the Conrad Rangali in South Ari. Uh, which is excellent, and some really good five-star all inclusives like Lily Beach and Lux Maldives as well. So if you want to see whale sharks, I I'd recommend maybe staying at Conrad. If you want to see mantas, I recommend staying in Bar. Uh, and yeah, both of these would be a seaplane transfer. If you want something really remote, take a domestic flight, go down to Six Senses or even further to Alifu Atoll, you've got the Raffles, uh, Park Hyatt, some really nice properties down in the south as well. So lots to explore in the Maldives and there's a lot of islands and on the surface they all kind of look the same. Uh, so it's, it can be actually quite tricky to sell Maldives compared to, you no, know, compared to Seychelles there's less products so it's easier to learn but in the Maldives there's so much product, so much to learn and all the islands kind of look the same and it's about how, how do you tell the difference and 
how do you recommend the right iron to your guest? So we'll um, we'll discuss a, a bit about that. But um, first of all, I'll give you the arrivals experience. So this is Mali International Airport. This is where your guests will be flying into, and our team is based at the arrivals terminal. We'll be waiting for them with uh, the hummingbird sign and take them through to their transfer. Then out the speedbird transfers, they they leave from this from the jetties just in front of the terminal just all along here and they they service north and south Mali Atoll. Uh, seaplanes they they leave from uh, the other side of the airport uh, there's a seaplane terminal on this side so they can go in get refreshment get something to eat and then um, then take off on their seaplane transfer. Depending on the resort that you're staying at some resorts have their own private seaplane lounges the, the seaplane terminal is actually brand new they've, they've built a new one um, so if you're staying in a luxury resort, they'll probably have within the seaplane terminal, they'll have their own private lounge where you can get a massage or get something to eat and you know really start your luxurious experience straight away. Um, and then yeah, domestic flights take off from the, the main runway. Uh, same as the internationals. This island just out of view, this is Hulamali, where a lot of locals now live. It's quite big. It's it's not, uh, it's a bit confusing that shot because you can't really see how long the island goes on for, but it's quite a long, wide island. And then connected from the bottom left now, there's a bridge that connects, yeah, goes like this, and that connects to Mali City. And that is Mali City where we have our office and our, our Maldives team is based and we have the fish market. And um, it's quite interesting. I think you could visit for a couple of hours. If you have some time to kill, maybe you've got a late departure and you've got some time to kill at the airport, you could get a taxi over the bridge or you get a, a water taxi and, and go check out Mali. Um, there's one area called Sol it, around Sultan Park, which I really like. It's got um, the Seagull Cafe, which is, does excellent ice cream, good coffee. And it's a really nice place to sit. It's got some um, nice banyan trees uh, around it and watch the hustle and bustle of, of Mali go by. And you can do a bit of shopping, you could visit the fish market, get a little taste of Maldivian city life. And it's, it's quite interesting. And, um, but I would have said, yeah, after a few hours, you've had maybe had a, a coffee or lunch at, at the Seagull Cafe. You've checked out Maldives' oldest mosque. Um, then you're probably ready to, you know, go, go home or, or, or go on with your, wherever you're going next, uh, next resort you're staying at. So, um, that is possible. We do also do guided tours around Mali if anyone would be interested. Um, so the seaplanes leaving again from the seaplane terminal, just the other side of the island, you, there's a free um, bus service that takes you around and then you, you, check, you check in at the airport, have your bags weighed, it's 20 kilograms hold, five kilograms hand, and then you get taken on a, on a minibus over to the seaplane terminal. For luxury guests, very high-end guests, we do offer a fast track service, um, which is $255 per person per way. And that means guests are met at the aircraft door, taken through to a private lounge, fast track through immigration, they get their passport details filled out in advance, and means that they don't have to queue up with everyone else. So that, that is a possibility. So if you have a guest staying at somewhere really expensive, might be worth considering. It's, it is an expensive service. Uh, there's no other option, it's the only, fast track service available. So it's $255 per person per way. Otherwise, it's just a normal, it's uh, just a normal meet and greet. But uh, yeah, so the seaplane terminal, uh, and they they are Canadian twin otter seaplanes, and they're, they're basically like a taxi service. So if you're going to a resort, you may stop off at a couple of resorts on the way to the final resort that you're staying at. So say you're going to um, somewhere in the Ra Atoll, maybe, yeah, maybe you're going to Jawali in the Ra Atoll. You may stop off at, at, the, at the Bar Atoll because it's kind of on the way. Um, so sometimes if, you, if you're going to a, a resort, you may stop off at one or two resorts on the way and people will get off and then some people will get on. And you'll land usually either directly at, at, at a resort at the jetty and uh, luggage will be taken off. Uh, not for very long, it'll be just a few minutes and then you'll take off again. Um, or a floating platform that's out in the middle of the ocean and then a boat will come up and pick up the, the guests who get off and, and you again fly off in a couple of minutes but something for clients to be aware of that does sometimes happen the, the seaplanes are not owned by the hotels they are run by a separate company called trans Maldivian airways tma 
and yeah, they're a third party. Um, and they sh how they schedule their flights is they look at who's arriving the night before, or I should say the night before they're looking at who's, who's arriving the following day and what time actual flights are arriving in. And that's how they schedule and they, they, they work out their, their, their seaplane schedules and which resorts they need to service for that day. So it's all done 24 hours in advance. So if you had a client and that they've booked for six months in advance and they're going to stay, let's say Joe Alley again, they, they want, and they want to know what time their seaplane is, you wouldn't be able to tell them because the seaplane company won't have scheduled their seaplane time yet. What you can say though is all seaplanes are scheduled based on their international flights, arrivals and departures. So the seaplane will be based on their arrival flight and their departure flight, and it should be within a, you know, a few hours of either side of, uh, of that. Um, so that's uh, something to be aware of. Also, seaplanes only fly during the day, so you can't, you can't get a seaplane you know, after 5, 6 p.m. And we say to guests, latest international arrival into Mali to catch the last seaplane, uh, ideally get in at 3 p.m. Anything later than 3 p.m., you run the risk of missing the last seaplane of the day, especially if there's you know, uh, lost luggage, flights delayed, bad weather, et cetera. Um, so we recommend 3 p.m. As the, as the latest arrival time. And that gives you a little wiggle, wiggle room. But it is a nice way, it's a nice form of uh, getting to the islands, flies at a nice altitude. Um, you can take nice pictures. It's quite a sort of glamorous, cool way of getting to, to the island. And yeah, you land on the water on, on the floats and, uh, and there you are. Um, so guests sometimes want to have that experience. Um, there are certain resorts that do have their own privately branded seaplanes. Now these are much more expensive than the TMA ones. But uh, for example, Four Seasons, uh, Ceneva, Nautilus, um, yeah, most of the really sort of high, Cheval Blanc Vela, most of the high-end luxury properties, they, they do have a, a branded private seaplane. So they are owned by the hotels. They're more expensive, but they can be, there is the option to book those instead. They're more money, but you can book them and they, they can be a bit more flexible. They won't stop off anywhere on the way or going back. They're not like a taxi service because they'll only be um, servicing that, that one hotel. You can also take a, uh, you know, if you're really wealthy, you could take a seaplane for charter and just hire out the seaplane privately all to yourself or to your family. And prices for that are usually about $10,000 per way, roughly nine, $10,000. Um, which maybe if you've got a large group might make financial sense, but uh, otherwise probably not. But yeah, the Maldives, I would say, is the ultimate beach stay destination. It's a great place for not doing very much, for relaxing with friends, families, loved ones um, on honeymoon, because you, it's the ultimate beach stay. And I, I think you compare it to our other destinations with Seychelles, with Mauritius, with Sri Lanka. Um, these are private resort islands available to guests and staff only. There's no public access. You are out in the middle of the Indian Ocean and uh, you've got it all to yourself. So even if a, if a resort is running at 100% occupancy, um, it's, it's comparatively, it's going to seem not very busy. You know, so Seychelles uh, has amazing beaches. Mauritius has beautiful beaches, but they're, they all legally, they're all public beaches. So um, you may have other guests from other hotels sharing the same beach. Uh, you may have just, you know, locals, um, using that beach. So it, it's not going to feel as private as a private Maldives resort island. Um, and then on top of that, you do have like these little sandbanks, like this picture here is of uh, a sandbank in opposite Suniva Fushi, where they, they are set up uh, canapes and cocktails and watch the sunset. And you go across on a boat and you're just out in the middle of the, the lagoon uh, while the sun is setting and the colors, you get like the pinks, purples, the sun rays hitting the water and it's so clear, the clear blue turquoise water and you're on like soft white coral sand and you, you really feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and sipping a glass of wine and having some canapes and it's lovely warm weather and it's it's pretty tough to be. Oh, you could you can have a romantic dinner like these people are. Um, that level of privacy, exclusivity, it's very, very Maldivian, I think. And, and then, of course, the rooms themselves, like the, the location of the rooms, the beach villas are only a few meters from the water, water's edge. So they're very, very close. Um, and then the water villas, you've got uh, steps leading straight into the, lagoo, the, the lagoon. So 
the location of the villas themselves, you're, you're always you're right there by the beach, by the water. Um, whereas you know, Mauritius, usually the properties are set back a little bit from, from the beach. Uh, there'll be a garden and then you get to the beach or like Seychelles, you, you, you can be up quite high. You have great views, but you have to walk down to the beach. Maldives, you're bang right on the beach uh, with usually unobstructed views. And you have some properties that are for really well set up for adults and some properties that are good for families. Now, when I was talking about the different types of islands and on the surface, they all kind of look the same. They all, you know, they've got turquoise waters, they've got nice looking beach, they've got beach villas or water villas. What's the difference? Um, this is when it, I think it really comes in handy to ask your customer questions about what they want to do on their holiday and what kind of style do they like? what size of island do they want, uh, what activities do they want um, all-inclusive, do they like a choice of different restaurants, um, do they need kids facilities, these kind of ask questions because you can narrow down the choice of resorts from 150 to free pretty quickly. Um, so for example honeymooner friendly resorts, so there are some resorts that are really well set up for honeymooners and adults and couples maybe want an adult only resort. So there are a, a, a few properties in Maldives that don't allow children. And they tend to be the smaller, more boutique options. Um, as examples, I've given uh, Kamandu, uh, Barros and Hurawali, they are exclusively adult only. Uh, no children are allowed at these properties. And, uh, you know, Kamandu is a good, affordable four star, very small island. I mean, the, the thing they all have in common, they're all quite small and um, but yeah, Command is like an all-inclusive, really simple, really nice, four-star plus, great house reef, always popular with divers, no kids allowed um, in the Labiani Atoll in the north. Uh, that's always a good seller. Uh, and then Barros and Hurawali are, are sort of five-star, um, really, really nice. Barros is, a, is an old classic, but it's got a lot of character and it's it's a favourite at Hummingbird. It's got one of one of our favourite restaurants, the Lighthouse Restaurant, is really, really nice. Uh, and it's a speedway transfer in the Mali Atoll, adult only, got a great house reef again. Uh, and so, yeah, Hurawali is, is a sort of more, um, a newer five-star all inclusive adult only property with an underwater restaurant. Uh, and that's also highly recommended. So you, 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 there's only a handful of adult only properties, but you know, guests might say, listen, I want an adult only property. Or they might say, listen, I want an adult only property that is accessible by speedboat. Well, then you kind of narrowed it down to Barros uh, because it's adult only, it's by speed, but you can, you, know, you, you can ask questions, you can gauge what the customers want, you can narrow down the options quite quickly. Conversely, if they're coming in as a group or they're a family, there are larger properties, larger islands that are really well set up for family stays. You know, they have the, a large choice of restaurants. So different cuisines, kids can be fussy or, you know, they've sung, sung for the kids, sung for the adults. They've got kids clubs and teen clubs, so they're entertained all day. There's activities for them to do. And, you know, they could, they'd be really bored on a small island with, you know, with just honeymoon people smooching and stuff. So better to go for a, a big island with loads of fun activities and um, go on treasure hunts and, and, and play with other kids as well um, and play water, do water sports and tennis and whatever um so family friendly resorts are the large properties uh that have more going on more activities and so you know like the atmosphere properties do really well for us they always sell really well lux is great cora cora um is, is a newer property that's done really really well or you know if, you, if you've got a bit more money then something like the one and only as or the Seneva have amazing kids clubs um, Seneva has got this ridiculous kids club, which is on the interior of the island. It's got loads of tree houses and zip lines, and yeah, actually the parents spend as much playing and time playing in, on the zip lines and tree houses as, as the kids do. So you have you have these different options, and um, by asking the questions, you can narrow it down pretty quick. Another thing that people do like in the Maldives, or certainly some people like to do, is to to snorkel, um, because Maldives has great snorkeling available directly from the beach. Uh, coral, marine life, um, and so this this picture here, this is of Dusit Tani, which is in the Bar Atoll. It's an affordable uh, five star, uh, all inclusive, and it's it's um, it's sold really well for us this year actually. Uh, it's it's a good all round product on a really beautiful island, very lush, and does great Thai food as well. 
And, and it's got a, you can see from this picture, it's got an amazing house reef that goes 360 degrees all the way around the island. And when I say house reef, basically it's a coral reef accessible from the beach. You could swim to it. A, a, a house reef is a reef you can swim to basically without the need to getting a, a speedboat. Sometimes the reefs are too far out and you have to get a speedboat to go out there. And you, you, you've got a nice big lagoon that you can do water sports in and swim in, but you, you wouldn't be able to swim all the way out to where the drop off is. And you can see on this picture, as we go out past the water pillars, the drop off is, is just here. So it's pretty close. And when I say drop off, it's like a cliff edge that goes straight down underwater. And that's where a lot of the coral uh, grows or where a lot of the marine life is, is based, congregates. So you get like mantas, stingrays, uh, reef tip sharks, um, all the characters from Finding Nemo, you should find turtles, um, you, should, you should find on the reef. And there'll be some clients that will be like, I, I want a, a resort that has a really good house reef because I don't, I don't want to get a speedboat across the lagoon. I don't want to have to wait for anyone. I just want to take my snorkeling equipment and go snorkeling when I feel like it, whenever I feel like it. So, um, that, and for me, that, that's an important aspect uh, in the world. So I, I really like to, that's my favorite thing to do is to go snorkeling. So I like to find a resort that has a really good reef. And because not all the resorts have good reefs. Some reefs are not so good. Some are better than others. <laughs> A Dusitani has a great reef. So if, they, if that's what they want to do, definitely I would recommend Dusitani. And if, if you know they can't afford the top end properties, that would be a good option. Um, if they're a very high end luxurious client, then you could go for Vakaru, which also has a great house reef. So if they're keen snorkelers or divers, think about the resorts that have good reefs. And uh, and I think you'll, you'll find a really good property for them. Every Sorry, resort has- Thomas. Can, yes. can I just, because you mentioned something about the reef, and I think it's important to um, tell people that there's, there are the natural islands and there are the man-made islands. And this makes a huge difference when it comes to the marine life too, right? Yes, exactly. So if, if, a, if an island has been man-made, it won't have a house reef, obviously. Um, so there'll, there won't be any reef there. It will have a big lagoon. Uh, which will be great if you want to play around on jet skis or go swimming in. But if you want to see marine life, you'd, you'd, you'd have to take a speedboat to get to the, wherever the reef is, which may be a few miles away. I mean, there's always a reef relatively close by, but not directly from the islands. So yeah, man-made islands. For example, one and only Ritu Ra is a man-made island. It has no reef. Um, so if, so if I've got a group that wants to do snorkeling directly from the beach, I'm not going to recommend one and only. But if I have a group that wanted to play around with jet skis or go fishing or with uh, film stars, then one and only Ritu is a really good option. So, <laughs> yeah, it does depend. Is your guest wanting a more natural property or do they want something that's a bit more um, man-made? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, diving is available at every resort. Every resort will have a Paddy certified dive centre. Um, again, it, it, in the diving, um, you might want to consider a resort that does have a reef, so you can do those dives straight from the reef. But with diving, usually you start there and then you go out and you do some shipwreck dives and advanced dives. So it doesn't matter so much with diving, I don't think, where you're staying. Diving is good everywhere because all the resorts will be probably go, be going to similar dive spots um, for like, you know, special drop offs in certain areas or coral reefs in certain areas or shipwrecks in certain areas. Uh, they will be doesn't yeah it doesn't really really matter where you stay you're going to have access to loads of good dive sites um so it's a great place to go as an experienced diver or to learn how to dive in, in the Maldives um and then yeah there's some quite unique experiences that you can have in the Maldives beyond that as well you can you know if you want to dine underwater there are quite a few underwater restaurants now the, the Hurawali which is the adults only property I mentioned earlier uh they have an underwater restaurant uh, the Atmosphere Ozen has an underwater restaurant. The Conrad Rangali in the South Harry Atoll, that was the first underwater restaurant. Um, Anantariki Hava, I think, has one of the best underwater restaurants. Really, really nice. Niyama has an underwater restaurant. There's, so there are a, a, a section. So that might be something that you want to experience. And if you want to experience underwater restaurant, then probably best to stay at a, a resort with, with the underwater restaurant. Um, you, can, you can potentially visit just to have lunch or dinner, but it's... It's tricky and you don't get, obviously, um, guests staying on the island get first preference uh, for, for, for dining in the underwater restaurant, right, as opposed to guests who are nearby. Um, so, yeah, if you want to experience that, you've got you probably best to stay at the, at the resort itself. 
to, 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 try, to try that out. Um, and yeah, you can got water slides as well. So at Suniva, they were the first people to introduce the, the water slides from the water villas. Um, you've got Jani and Suniva Fushi that, that brought in these very amazing overwater villas with slides going straight into the lagoon. Uh, and they've also got the um, Out of the Blue restaurant, which is in this picture here. Again, it has the water slide. And it's really fun. You can um, go skid along straight into the lagoon, swim up to the bar, have a cocktail, and you just do this all day. Uh, it doesn't get old. And they've now introduced zip lines across the resort as well. So they've got this interactive dining experience where you zip line from one treetop to the to another to, and you get your next course at the next uh, treehouse uh, at Suniva Fushi. So they do some really crazy cool stuff like that. Um, real um, leaders, I think, at actually at the moment uh, in terms of experiences and imagination, uh, Maldives, in terms of design and uh, these kind of things, I think Maldives is really at the forefront of luxury. Uh, you also have a uh, bubble lodge at Finolu, which uh, which Finolu is a really nice one. It's in the Bar Atoll, five star, all inclusive, but uh, not as as expensive as Joali or, or Suniva. And the bubble lodge is at the end of this kilometer long sandbank. And so at the end, there's a, there's an awesome restaurant called the Crab Shack, which is one of our faves, where you can get like baked crab and rosé wine. And then beyond that, there's this bubble lodge we can you can book exclusively and spend a night or two under the stars, maybe at the end of your holiday. Um, so Bono is a cool one, actually, for guests who want uh, an island with a bit more going on, because they've got this kilometer sandbank, which stretches out from the island itself. You've got a lot of uh, real estate that isn't used. Um, and it's, it's a really a, a good one for maybe younger guests who want a bit more of an atmosphere on the resort uh, to be able to socialize. They get like some, on a Friday night, they have DJs, fire breathers, dancers. Um, so it's quite a cool scene they've got. They've cultivated at Fanelu, which is, um, yeah, I think for sort of the hipper, hipper guests who have a little bit of money, then it might be a, might be a nice option for them. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I've just picked out a few of our top sellers just to give you an idea uh, on some properties that we do very well at the moment. Just um, starting at more affordable ones like Pontus Mufushi. It's a... Uh, I would say it's a lead in five star all inclusive. It's in the Ari Atoll, so great for seeing your, your whale sharks, your old manta ray as well. And it's just a really beautiful island, really, really beautiful. Um, it's got one meal plan, it's all inclusive, very simple, easy to sell. And uh, it's, um, it's a simple product, but it's done extremely well. So we like, we like the Constance brand. And uh, Mufushi is full of character and, uh, and yeah, top seller for us. So I think it's really well suited for a honeymoon couple wanting a some more traditional island with a great house reef, want to do snorkeling, they want to experience nice Maldives done to a high standard. Constant movie, she's great. Something a bit more modern in style, what more um, uh, contemporary style is Cora Cora, but set against a, a very old island. So the island's very lush, but the style, the accommodation is very modern contemporary and uh it's quite nice it, it it opened fairly recently opened end of last year and it's got 100 villas it's got a great all-inclusive plan called the freedom plan and currently they've got 50 types of wine um and a mini bar included uh but that's going to be upgraded to 80 types of wine uh so it's got a really great choice all included on the all-inclusive um and it's yeah, it's got two one two bedroom villas. Got the the villas with the slides going to the lagoon, um, which is really really nice. And quite uniquely, it also has some historical uh, relics. It's got uh, two ancient Buddhist wells, where um, and, and a museum. Um, so these actually predate the arrival of Islam in the Maldives. So uh, Maldives now is an Islamic country. I should have mentioned this earlier, but it is an Islamic country. Um, so you can't bring alcohol into the Maldives. Uh, you can you can buy alcohol of on the resort islands because they're private islands and they have their own liquor licenses. But uh, if you go to a local island, you can't drink on a lo local island. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's they have um, Islamic laws uh, on on the main islands as well. So it's an Islamic country to to be aware of. Quite interesting though. And it arrived in the um, I think in the 12th century, but before that, it was a Buddhist country. 
uh, and there are some relics hidden away in the, sort of the jungles of these islands. And uh, Cora Cora has preserved these two amazing yeah, uh, ceremonial wells here, you can find here. And there's a museum with some other artifacts that they've discovered. So um, that's quite interesting. Set, so a mixture of the old and, and the new. Um, but it's done, done really well since it opened. It also has a really good reef. Um, a resort, we're all, we're, so the, our entire company is going to, be, going to be going out in a couple of weeks. And we're going to be staying at this property called The Foreman which has been a really good seller for us as five-star all-inclusive. Um, again, quite affordable on a large island is based in the south of the Maldives. So in the Gar Alafuato, so you, you have to fly domestic flight and then a speedboat. Uh, it's very remote, but it's very beautiful. It's quite a big island. Um, it's got a bit of reef, not amazing reef. It has some reef to do, um, but there are, they do a boat trips to some better coral reefs nearby, but uh, there's, in other sort of facilities, it's really, really good. They've got this amazing all-inclusive plan, 80 types of wine included, uh, mini bar refilled twice daily. You can just kind of relax and have fun. Um, I sent uh, very good friends of mine there uh, recently uh, who are yoga fanatics, and they were doing a sunrise yoga every every morning and have it lo absolutely loving it, saying the best holiday they've uh, ever been on. So uh, I was feeling pretty pleased with my recommendation on that one. So um, yeah, looking forward to going to the Pullman. Um, it's uh, great, great value, all-inclusive, beautiful island. Actually has a, you can see it has a, it's quite a big island. So it has a, a, a lake on the interior of the island, a freshwater lake, which is something a little bit different. Um, so a little bit more to explore. It also has a couple of aqua villas. So it's an overwater villa with a bedroom upstairs, but also a, a bedroom downstairs um, underwater, which is quite cool. Um, Fernando, I was talking to you about earlier, being a good one with the kilometer long sand bank, the bubble lodge, cool for maybe sort of younger, um, younger crowd wanting to, to party a little bit. Um, that might be a nice option, but still luxurious. And it's yeah, not too far from Hanafari Bay, so you could do a, a visit to the um, manta rays as well. But so yeah, you can see this kilometer long sand bank, you see the bubble lodge, um, really, really nice uh, to have that all that space and look at the amazing beach as well huge huge beach my personal favorite property in, in Maldives is the six senses Lamu. i love it i think it's um it's a really cool product it's it's quite eco environmentally friendly uh it's um organic it's uh yeah, everything is kind of recycled you know so for example like these cushions you, you can see in this picture here they would have been made on on the resort they have a uh, sewing factory on the interior of the islands and they they reuse fabrics and create new things out of them so like pillow covers uh the glasses that you drink out would have been made from recycled glass um the cutlery you would use there would have been re recycled cutlery um j just uh, little touches uh they, they have a, a policy of waste to wealth so they, they recycle as much as they can wood glass um fabrics some of the vases for um that you will see on the island that they you know light up the walkways they're actually towels you know old towels uh, that guests would have might have once used uh, they've been sort of dipped dipped in concrete and sort of sculpted into funny shapes and they they, they kind of line the walkways and stuff so um very imaginative uh very you know while being environmentally friendly it's barefoot luxury it's still very luxurious it's very high standard amazing service um but really attention to detail and they got a massive marine biology department um, so if you want to learn about marine life, then it's one of the best places to go and you can do coral replanting programs. You can get involved in uh, turtle monitoring. They, they encourage the growth of seagrass because it uh, really benefits the turtles. Uh, they also have um, surfing. So they have a surf school. It's a great place to go to learn how to surf or if you're an experienced surfer, you could surf all week and have an amazing time. So. Um, uh, yeah, I really like Six Senses Lama. It's got an amazing, actually behind the guy who's surfing, you can see this kind of, this overwater section. This is where most of the bars and restaurants are located. So there's a real kind of a good atmosphere in this area. And they've got like a chocolate room and an ice cream room as well, uh, which is open all day. So you can just go in and fill up on the chocolate and ice cream whenever you feel like it, which is quite fun. You don't have to pay, it's just go in and fill your boots. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Six Senses. It's a beautiful island, very, quite rustic, but still luxurious. And um, a top property for sure. And then, so, you know, up, up at the, the best of the best, somewhere like Vakaru um, is in the Bar Atoll. It's 
very beautiful lush island but the uh, the accommodation is a bit more contemporary than you would find at six senses and this is yeah like a five star plus luxury property it also has three blue holes one two three and an amazing house reef all the way through so if you're into diving you could dive and these go down quite deep uh, or you can snorkel on the interior there's loads of amazing marine life in these and around the uh the island itself so uh, vaccaroos um for a luxury property it's got an amazing house reef it's got luxury accommodation and um yeah really good for for families i would say they've also got the largest overwater villa the four bedroom overwater residence which is a pretty impressive um villa as well so a few uh, just a few options to to get the ball rolling uh, di different types of properties um but I've, I've what i've got is i've got this might be quite useful for anyone who wants i've got like this cheat sheet which kind of d defines the different uh, resorts into different categories uh you know and and by star rating so four star would be affordable four star plus would be a bit smaller a bit more boutique than um than the four star and the entry level five star you know modern contemporary properties usually uh with good all-inclusive plans and then the mid-range five stars are really really top properties well still being in the within the realm of someone who as is rich but isn't like uber rich and then the five star plus uber luxury time to call mommy and daddy because it's so expensive um those properties as well so uh, best for families um i've given a, a few ideas there so these these are larger resorts with good kids clubs and things going on um best for honeymooners smaller resorts more boutique maybe even adult only uh quieter not so much for kids to do uh, as a general overwater accommodation is not great for kids especially if they're young I and mean, you've really got to keep an eye on them because being overwater with young children it's not the best combination uh, although the resorts usually do allow it they do say you, know, you need to keep a very close eye on, on the children um best house reef so the coral reef for snorkeling and diving few few um selections there and and these are all natural islands these are not man-made islands uh best for all inclusive if you if uh, i mean that's one thing about maldives is if you are on a budget i think all inclusive does make sense because uh you can't spend your money anywhere else really you'll get you're probably going to stay on that island for the duration of your holiday and you're going to eat and you're going to drink just on that island it's not like you're going to nip down the shops or go to a local restaurant or bar you're probably just going to stay and eat in the island so it makes sense to have it sort of prepaid and then you can relax and enjoy yourself um, and it, from experience i've stayed at some expensive hotels and run up quite a hefty bar bill and and been sweating on checkout which hasn't been the most pleasurable experience whacked it on the old credit card and uh just uh put it down to experience so um yeah if you can be all inclusive i would definitely choose to be on all inclusive uh, for my future visits to the Maldives. um yeah and then there's the resorts that like best for entertainment and activities so like Fenoli, like I was saying, they have parties on that kilometre along the sandbank. That that would be a good one. I think, um, you know, saying more mu live music. Boruberu is the local Maldives culture. I, for those who joined earlier, there was uh, a lady singing on the guitar at the beginning. She was uh, she was covering um, a band called Zero, Zero Degrees Atoll, who were a famous Maldivian band. They're very uh, talented musicians, the Maldivians. Um, and so, you know, at dinner, sometimes you might have some live music, which is quite nice, or Bodiberi, which is the traditional Maldivian music, which is about a, a troupe of about 20 people, including drummers and storytellers. And it's usually uh, stories involving old Maldivian myths about sailors and sea monsters and all, all good stuff. Um, as for food, so yeah, maybe you want you want to dine at underwater restaurant or you want to dine in a treehouse restaurant or you want to do that zip line eating experience across the Neva Fushi. Um, there's oh, diet dining over water. I mean, there's, there are some real cool signature restaurants in the Maldives um, that may sway your client towards a particular property. Um, and, and there's, yeah, the, the food and service in the Maldives as a general rule is, is really exceptional. It's very, very good. Um, and then, yeah, your clients might have different styles. So they might like, some clients might like a modern, a sort of contemporary style and they tend to be the newer properties the man-made properties like one and only or, or waldorf uh cheval st regis they've got a very sort of stark um startling kind of modern contemporary style and the islands themselves have been created by man so some people prefer that very clean lines and modern and shiny and blingy um so that 
that might suit some people better. Or, you know, you, you can go for some more barefoot, rustic, thatched roofs, traditional woods, um, eco-friendly kind of style, like, like Six Senses or Suniva, uh, for example. So that's just a few, um, a few suggestions to help you navigate the, uh, the crazy, the crazy selection of resorts that you have in, in the Maldives, um, because there is a lot to choose between. Um, but yeah, th there are subtle differences between the properties and, uh, some really nice experiences to be had as well. Uh, any, any questions at all? Sorry, I didn't realize I had my audio off. Um, so thank you for the presentation. Um, Nay would like to know if there's a resort mute, more suitable for singles. Good question. Yeah, um, it has come up uh, a few times. I would recommend, there's a couple of, in the affordable bracket, I would recommend the standard Maldives, which is a resort that is quite good uh, for groups of friends or singles. Uh, so it's a bit more sociable. Um, so the standard Maldives, that could be one. Candima could be another. That's another affordable property, quite big. So sort of bustling and more going on. You could also look at, uh, there's a property called the Crossroads. Well, there's a Hard Rock Hotel and there's the Sai Lagoon and they're, they're on this larger island, man-made, close to Mali. It's called Crossroads Project and it has a marina, it has restaurants, has a Cafe Del Mar, a beach club. Uh, it's, it's, it's different. It's not like the Maldives. It's not your traditional Maldives, but there's, there's people coming in on yachts. There's more going on. Um, that I think if you're a single person, you want to meet people, you want to hang out and make friends or whatever, that could work quite well. Or if you want to go higher end, you want to go up market, I would look at the Patina or the Ritz Carlton, which are two five star luxury properties and they're integrated. So if you're staying at the Ritz Carlton, you can go over the Patina and vice versa. And there's a, there's a free boat service that goes back and forth. And the patina has a marina again with shops and restaurants. So it's not just a, you know, just a island in the middle of nowhere. There's, there's going to be more people kind of going and going shopping and, and going to the different restaurants. And there'll be more going on, more of atmosphere and uh, more opportunities to, to meet and chat with people. Thank you. Um, Stella would like to know if you recommend combining islands. Yes, I would. I would recommend combining islands, but I would be careful how you do it and make sure that um, the easiest way to combine an island is to have the islands in the same atoll. So you can get a speedboat from one island to the other. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you if you have two islands in the bar atoll, that would work great. So you could stay at Suniva Fushi and then go on to stay at Anantara Kihava or uh, Four Seasons Lander. And you can get a speedboat directly from one to the other. What you don't want to do is spend half a day uh, going back to the international airport and waiting for your seaplane to the next island because you're going you're going to waste maybe a whole day traveling uh, of your holiday and that's that's not fun. Um, so yeah, if you're combining islands, combine it within the same atoll or have at least one of the islands in the Mali, Mali atoll. So once you get back to the airport, you just have to get, hop on a speedboat and then you can get to the island fairly quickly. Great. And Anna is asking whether the in your opinion, it's a destination that you can go to many times. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I've, I've been many times and we do. I mean, a lot of our guests are repeater guests. They keep going back and back and back. Um, yeah, I think you can but because the resorts are so different. Every resort has its own personality and uh, different experiences are available at different resorts. Um, so, I, and there are different regions that... You, I, I want to explore the South a bit more because that's the area that I don't know so well. Um, and so I, I, I enjoy going to local islands and, and um, going to like picnic islands and, and um, it, 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 enjoying some of the local kind of culture and stuff and, go, and going to try and try and sampling traditional Maldivian food. And they, in different regions of the Maldives, they do have um, different dialects, uh, different cuisines. Um, so there are different experiences to be had. There's a place in the South called... Uh, formula which uh which is famous for its tiger sharks you can go diving with tiger sharks which is quite cool so I'd, i would like to do that it's perfectly safe apparently <laughs> um so yeah i'd like to do that i'd love to go um to south Ariatol and see a whale shark i've uh, i've been south but I've, i haven't had time because i've always been working i haven't had time to go out and actually do the whale sharks so i'd love to do that 
I love to do, I like to go back to Baratol and do the Hanafari Bay. So, you know, these different things you can go, do on different trips um, and experience. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think definitely repeating, uh, it makes sense. Also, you can go, uh, Maldives, I think you can sell year round. I, I know a lot of people are put off by, you know, right now we're in the traditional low season. Um, May to October is considered uh, not such a good time to go to Maldives, but I, I think actually it's a really good time, especially for July and August. Uh, we usually have pretty good weather. Um, and statistically, August has less rainfall than a lot of other months uh, in the high season. So we'll have a look at, at those months. It can be a really good time to go to Maldives. Great. Um, I have one last question. Um, also, can you recommend a hotel around Malay? Yeah, I mean, lots, lots of hotels, uh, lots of good hotels around Mali. It depends what, what you want. Um, if you want barefoot rustic uh, or barefoot luxury, uh, I think Gili is a really, is one of our favorites. Uh, that's like a top, top luxury option, uh, but more in the Suniva Six Senses kind of eco-friendly vibe. Uh, if you want something that's modern and uh, contemporary, then one and only or Waldorf Astoria, very impressive. Again, they're very luxury. Um, if you want something a bit more affordable, then you've got you've got loads of options. You've got the atmosphere properties, the uh, sort of Oblu Select Sangeli and Oblu Nature, uh, really really good price and good product. Um, yeah, it depends what you what you're looking for, really. Great. Um, so wow, time flew and it's been an hour. So. There really is a lot, um, as Thomas mentioned, on the Maldives. Make sure you know the profile of, of your guests before recommending a hotel. If you're unsure, you can always rely on Hummingbirds consultants. They have the expertise. They visit the hotels and they, they'll know for sure what's, what's best for your client's profile. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Thomas. Um, we'll share this presentation with you. Remember, this was just a little glimpse into the Maldives. There's so much to see and do. And if you need anything, I'm available in Brazil. And wishing everyone an, a great week ahead. Thanks. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao.